Hey everybody, this is Susan with Susan Monroe Art, and today we are going to be painting trees. I have a little tutorial on that. I'm in the middle of painting a commission of somebody's house, and the house has some lovely woods behind it and a big beautiful tree in front. So I thought while I was doing that, I would share some of my tips and some of my techniques with you on how to paint trees. I remember when I started painting, they were a struggle for me. They ended up looking like lollipops on sticks, which was not the look I was going for. So hopefully this will help you a little bit in working out how to make trees. I'm gonna do a little bit of color theory, cool colors and warm colors. I'm gonna tell you the colors that I use for making trees, and you'll see my techniques for doing the leaves and for the trunks. Hopefully it'll be really helpful to you. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Doing that will really help me continue making these videos for you. So thanks for watching and let's get on with the work. So when I paint my trees, I usually mix up some greens ahead of time and they are either warm greens or cool greens. So let me tell you a little bit about what that means. A warm green is a green that tends toward the warmer end of the spectrum. It might be mixed with yellow. So let's think of a sun color. A green mixed with yellow, sun is hot, is a warm color. Cool greens are more often mixed with blue, like water or ice. So that's the cool colors. Some of the warm greens that I use the most, I don't have a huge palette, but these are ones I like best. This sap green. This is probably the green I use most in the world. I might use this for sunny sides of trees, warm areas in a plant, places that are being hit by the light. And then I will also use Windsor Green Yellow Shade, or it could be Thalo Green with a yellow shade. Okay, I might use that to make a warm shadow color. Let me show you how I do that. If I mix my Windsor Green Yellow Shade with a red, I typically mix it with uh, alizarin crimson uh, you come up with a nice dark to be used in the shadows this is a warm a warm dark and if i add enough of that alizarin crimson you can come up almost a black color like this which makes a really beautiful black in your paintings okay so you want to get really dark in one of your trees and then when I want to go lighter, I typically mix my sap green with a yellow to get a nice, pretty, sunshiny green. I'm going to tell you, before you dip your brush in yellow or pretty much any other color when you're using these strong greens, it's a good idea to rinse your brush twice. There's an even lighter color, almost a pistachio green. Uh, these greens are really dark, they're really strong, and they will uh, mix with the colors in your palette. So if you want to keep your colors pure, mix, uh, rinse once in a, a bottle of water, and then mix again in a second cup of water to make sure you get all the green out before you stick that brush into your yellow or your red paint. When it comes to the cool colors I'm using when painting trees, a lot of the time, I'll use this Windsor Green with Thalo Green in the blue shade. You can compare it with this, sort of the sister opposite of this Thalo Green in the yellow shade. And you see it is a cool color, it has a blue mix in it. I'll also use actual blues. I'll use Cerulean Blue to help lighten up places in tree trunks, make cool areas in the leaves. I'll also use ultramarine blue for making cool areas in the leaves, mixing it with any of these colors that will automatically cool down a color if you mix blue with it. Then to make a cool dark shadow, I might take this Windsor green with the blue shade, add a lizard and crimson, and I can come up with a very cool dark. Let me add a little more red to that. And I come up with a very cool dark, uh, even a black. 
it is pretty black right there. Okay, so that's just some ideas on mixing greens for your trees. You can mix and match anything you want. I mean, if you don't have these colors of green and you have different ones in your palette, you go Glen Coco. I mean, you mix what you want to mix and just experiment until you find the greens that you like. So I'm going to start my background of trees by painting the sky. The sky, of course, behind the trees. I'm doing this first so that when I put in the trees, I don't have to go back later and then paint bits of blue sky in between the leaves. That's really fiddly and hard to do. So I'm gonna wet the paper with water, with clear water. Notice I'm cutting in around the big tree trunk and I'm also cutting in around the roof of the house and making the whole background wet, even where it's gonna be green trees. I'm gonna go ahead and just wet the whole thing and make it fairly damp. Now I've mixed up a puddle of cerulean blue in my palette and I'm coming in and I'm just dropping in that blue paint onto the wet paper and allowing it to spread. The capillary action of the water is pulling that blue along and making a loose sky. I'm looking at my picture. I'm trying to determine particularly where you can see the sky through the trees, making sure I get the blue in there. Um, and also, you know, any place I leave white could be a cloud in the background as well. So this is gonna make a nice light blue, loose sky. And you might wonder if this blue that I'm painting all over top of where my trees are gonna go is going to uh, cause a problem with the color of my trees once I paint them in. I'm gonna be painting the green over the blue and I have to say generally no, it doesn't cause a problem. Now I'm coming back in with a dry brush and soaking up these beads of wet paint that have run down to the, the bottom of uh, my wet area. That way I won't have any, any blooms, any places that are drying more quickly than others. It's gonna make it a nice smooth wash. I'm doing it with a paper towel and with a dry brush, just soaking those up. And then I'm gonna let it dry or dry it with my hair dryer before I go on to really paint in the green of the trees in the background. Before I start painting the trees, I wanted to show you the photo that I'm working from. And you see, I've got an arrow pointing toward this group of trees on the left. I'm considering those to be foreground trees. You can see they're closer to me than the trees that are further in the background. So those are the trees that I'm going to paint first. There is a variety of shades of green in those. There's one that's a little further to the left that's definitely gonna be a cooler green. It looks like a pine of some kind. And then as the sun is hitting the trees further to the right, you see it comes to be a very light yellow that makes those trees stand out from the background. So I'm gonna try and copy that um, transition of color from the cool green of the pine tree to the brighter yellow green of the trees with the sun hitting them on those foreground trees to make them stand out from the just groupings of trees that are in the back. So now I'm gonna start painting the darker green tree. I'm putting in just a, a base color, sort of my starter color, my marker, to show where that tree is. You can see where I lightly outlined it in my drawing to know where to put it. And since it's a pine tree, pine trees usually have uh, needles that point upward, they're more spiky looking, and I'm expressing that with my brush strokes on the edges. So this is gonna be my, my base coat for this tree. This is gonna be the lightest color in that tree. Because you know, in watercolor, you work from light to dark. So I have to put my lightest color in first. So here's gonna be the base. Then I'll go in with a medium tone and then I'll finish with a dark tone for the tree. So you'll see that as I proceed. So I've let my first coat dry. I've dried it with a hair dryer. And now I'm coming in with my second coat. You really don't want to paint on top of your first coat until it's dry. 
That way, if you do that, you won't end up with the beautiful transparent layers of watercolor. You'll really end up with more of a mud color. When people say they're having muddy watercolors, a lot of the time that's what they're doing. They're painting on their first coat before it's totally dry. So I'm painting on top of my first coat now with a cooler green. It means it has more blue in it. Um, so those colors I think of as pine trees, they are definitely more of a blue green. And I'm not totally covering up my first coat. I'm letting bits of it peek through to give this tree a sense of depth. I don't want to, to totally cover up my first work. I'm building on top of it and I'm letting that first coat work with the second coat. So while the second coat dries on my pine tree, I'm gonna come in and paint the lighter yellow tree that was to the right of the pine tree. If you think back to the photo I showed you, remember there was a, a maple or an oak to the right of the pine, to the right and behind it, uh, that had the sun hitting it and was more of a warm green, a yellow green. And that's what I'm filling in now. I used sap green and cadmium yellow to make this color. You could use any warm green that you have and yellow uh, to make a color like this. And I'm painting this tree differently than I did the pine um, because it has a general shape that's different. Pine tree, as I mentioned, the needles are spiky, they go up. I expressed that with my brush strokes. With this tree, I'm using my brush strokes to make the leaves look more random to show how the branches are pulled downward with the weight of the leaves, how there are random leaves coming off the end of the branches where there are little twigs sticking out. It's just a different type of tree and you have to look at that and express that with the way you shape it. Now I'm going to paint a little of this uh, green, this warm green to the left of my pine tree in my photo reference, there's actually a house you can see on this side of the pine tree. I didn't want to include that house. I just wanted to have trees in the background. Um, the house would have been a little distracting, the, the second house. So I'm using some creative license and making it look like this tree extends on um, both sides behind the pine tree. Here's our reference photo again. And you can see from the little red arrow, I'm pointing to these other leaves that seem to be in the foreground and probably belong to this big tree that's in front of the house. I'm gonna go ahead and paint those in next. To, I think they'll be my last foreground tree leaves that I'll be putting in. And for these, I'm gonna use that light, uh, light green again, the sap green mixed with yellow because there's a lot of sunshine on those and I really want them to pop out from the background. And when I paint them, I'm gonna do it very carefully following the pattern that the leaves uh, show me in the reference photo. They're sort of airy, there's space in between them. I don't wanna paint big clumpy patches of green. I'm gonna be very sensitive to the, the patterns of colors and leaves uh, as I see them in the photo. So while I've been painting my warm green foreground tree on the right, the warm green foreground tree on the left has had a chance to dry. And now I can go in with the second coat on this one and add some shadows, add some depth to it um, by making some, you know, just little uh, shadow places in the tree. I noticed that the shadows generally come at the bottom of the branches. There'll be clumps of shadow, and I try to express that with my brush strokes. As you can see, this is still a warm green, but it's a darker green than my first coat was. I'm gonna use this color for this tree and to put in shadows on the tree on the right, the other foreground tree. Now 
it's time to move on to the background trees. And a thing to remember when you're painting the background is that you want to differentiate it from the foreground trees. If I use the same intensity of yellow green on the trees that are supposed to be behind another tree that has that yellow green, you're not going to be able to tell them apart. You need to do something different with the paint in the background to make those foreground trees pop out. And I do that by either making the background darker than the foreground or lighter than the foreground. And you can look at your reference photo generally and see what it tells you to do. If you look at these trees on the right that are in the background and the trees that are in the center on the background, they are darker than the foreground trees. Those foreground trees have light hitting them. They're a lighter yellow, a warmer yellow. Those background trees are a bluer green. They're a, a darker green, a cooler green. If I look all the way over in the left of the photo though, uh, those background trees are lighter in color. They have more sunshine. They're a warmer green compared to the cooler green of that pine tree that's in the foreground. So I'm going to differentiate between the foreground and background by changing the intensity or the color of the paint in the background. So you'll see as I begin painting these trees on the far right, I'm using a green that is so dark, it's almost black. I achieved this color by mixing my uh, Windsor green, a uh, blue shade, or you can say phthalo green that has a blue shade, with cadmium red or with a permanent carmine. It makes a really beautiful, dark, rich, cool green. And that is what I'm putting in back here. These trees I saw were also pine trees, so I'm making my spiky little pine tree strokes with the, the needles, the leaves pointing up watching myself do this now uh, back in the video, I'm thinking I wish I'd used a smaller brush, but it's, it's okay. I know it comes out all right in the end. I'm working in between those lighter green, those uh, warmer green leaves that are in the foreground tree. I wanna get that juxtaposition of color to make the foreground tree really stand out from the background. have that super dark cool green on my palette I'm gonna go in and put my third coat on my uh, foreground pine tree see I'm using a small brush I think this is a O2 size brush uh, very tiny to really get the sense of those spiky tiny uh, pine tree leaves I'm putting them in in clumps and groups because I looked at my photo and I see that that's how the shading looked on this tree. Your photo reference is always going to tell you what to do. You're going to use your photo reference as a map of where to put your colors. So this will be my final coat on this tree. Remember I said I do my trees usually in three layers. The base coat, the lightest coat, then the middle coat, a shadow coat, and then the final coat which will be my darkest, my final shadow. going to continue painting the background now by adding all those additional trees that are in in the back. So I'll be using the cool greens and the warm greens as I mentioned, but also I'm going to be making my colors a lighter shade of green. So they will be the same colors, the same hue as my foreground colors, only they'll be less intense. A lighter a lighter a lighter shade. That's because things in the distance are generally not as intense in color as things that are close to you. And it's a good way in art to show the appearance of distance. If you make background things lighter and foreground things darker. So I'll be doing that throughout the background of this piece and I'm just gonna get to work and knock it out.
Now that I've filled in the background with a light color for the leaves and then a shadow color for them, I can come in and start adding the branches and the trunks of the trees. For this, I'm using a very dark gray, brown, blackish brown color. I used uh, burnt sienna and uh, ultramarine blue to make this color mixed in equal measure and a very fine brush. And I just gently put in uh, little branches connecting the leaves. The branches are the skeleton that are gonna make your tree come together. So be careful when you do this. You don't wanna add too many. Also, look at a tree and notice how the branches decrease in size as you get toward the top. You know, the trunk will be biggest, then the limb, then the branch, then the twig will be your smallest part of that branch. And make sure you express that in your painting. You're also gonna to wanna to make your limbs and your branches sort of weave in and out of the leaves. They're not gonna to be totally on top of the leaves. If we're totally behind the leaf, you wouldn't be painting them anyway because you wouldn't be able to see them. But make them sort of pop out in certain areas. The trunk will go behind a group of leaves and then come out in front of a bunch of leaves. Make sure you're using that sort of weaving technique when you're painting them. Also keep in mind that branches on the whole are pretty straight. I use straight lines when I do my branches unless I'm painting a specific tree that has something crooked going on in the limbs of the branches. You're gonna to wanna to make them small, straight, light lines. Remember, these branches aren't the focus of your background. They're just linking your leaves together and making it sort of come together as a whole. And now the time has come to paint this huge trunk that's dominating this tree scene here. Uh, I'm first just filling in the white with a light mixture of um, French ultramarine and raw umber. I'm going to cover the whole trunk in that color. And uh, I want you next time you see a tree trunk to take a careful look at it and just notice the colors of trunks. A lot of the time they're not just brown, although people tend to paint them brown. There's a lot of gray in them. Sometimes there's a green in them, even some blue in the shadows. So you can branch out, no pun intended, when you're painting the trunks of the trees and throw in some additional interesting colors. Once that first coat is dried, I'm going to work trying to suggest some of the texture of the bark of the tree. I'm using a darker color. I'm using ultramarine blue mixed with burnt umber. It makes a nice gray black uh, color. You can lean it more toward the brown or more toward the blue depending on how much of each color you put into it. And I'm just making some jagged marks down the tree, making sure the first coat is showing through and also noting on uh, the photograph where there is light hitting the tree and trying to leave those areas light in the painting and not overpainting it too much with the dark color. So at this point, I decided I would play around a little bit and try and add some salt to the wet paint to make it have a rougher texture. This is a trick you can use. It's good for making rocks, making gravel, making anything with a rough texture. Put a little salt in the damp watercolor, not soaking wet, the damp watercolor, and then that salt will soak up the watercolor as it dries, leaving a gravelly looking, um, look, gravelly looking texture in your paint. It's, it's really cool. I suggest you try it just for fun. So once the paint on that coat was all dry, I brushed off all my salt. And then you can see the textured effect that the salt gave to my tree trunk. And there you can see sort of the mottled rough look that the salt gave the paint, uh, which is great for showing any sort of rough texture in your watercolors. 
and finally I'm putting in my third and darkest coat of paint on the tree trunk. This is just a stronger version of the alizarin crimson and uh, burnt sienna mixture that I was using before. I'm once again putting it on in jagged marks following the way that the bark is growing up and down on the tree. I'm making sure I'm putting it darker on the shadow side of the limb and of course trying to leave that lighter first coat showing on the lit, the sunlit side of the limb. And here's the finished product, a nice background full of beautiful trees. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel for more watercolor tips and techniques. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.